Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Adrian. You may have seen me in some of the previous clip videos of SciAll, uh, but I'm a honeybee researcher, and so today I'm going to be doing a video on how to tag bees. And so that's something that I have quite a bit of experience with. I do it for all of my experiments, kind of how I start the summer. Um, but there's a little kind of added context of I'm doing this after taking a year off because of the pandemic. I'm sure you guys are aware. So I just got back into the lab about a month ago, and now that it's getting warm and the bees are getting active, I'm getting back into the actual hands-on research stuff. Uh, and so what I'm going to show you is basically the two days of me doing my first steps of research and getting bees tagged. Um, and it's going to be kind of the whole thing. So from start to finish, everything that I did, and maybe with a couple of glimpses into stuff that um, I kind of had a little bit of trouble with because I kind of forgot that, that was part of the process or maybe even it's just I forgot where things were in lab after not being here for a while. So that's the basic idea of the video. Um, I hope you like it. So a big part of tagging newly emerged bees is having a place for them to emerge and that's what an incubator is for. So the first thing I had to do is go check our incubator make sure that it's running at the right temperature but it also needs to be running at the right humidity. And we do that by making sure there are containers of water in it at all times. And so that's when I opened it and realized that those containers haven't been filled in a year. So that was the first part of my day. The other supplies I needed for marking the next day were the actual paints, individual number tags, and cages to house bees after they've been marked. And luckily all of that's been perfectly organized since I last left lab. And so I was almost ready to actually go out and get live bees for my colonies, but since part of this process involves taking frames from my colonies, I want to make sure I'm replacing those frames as well. So that's what I have here is a bunch of old hives in storage that we can use and take frames from. And what I needed was one regular frame that I could use to replace the female workers that I took, and then a drone brood frame, which is where male bees are laid. And since male bees are a little bit larger, they get laid in a different type of cell. So you want to make sure you're kind of swapping like for like frames. And then I was ready to go, so like every good southern boy, I got up in my pickup truck and headed out to the sunset, slash towards where my field colonies were. Once I got to the field site, I lit my smoker, which is always the first thing you should do when working with bees. Uh, I think there's kind of like weird perceptions and ideas and a lot of myths about what the smoker actually does and doesn't do, so I might address that in another video, but for this video I'm just going to say, uh, this is me lighting a smoker, you should probably do it if you want to beekeep safely and uh, mainly it just helps me kind of spatially disperse the bees away from where I'm trying to work, and it blocks their sense of smell. And so then I actually went into the colony, and so this is me blowing a little bit of smoke at the entrance, uh, blowing a little bit at the top before I open up the colony, um, and then we're going to jump cut a little further ahead in the process. And this is me actually getting out the drone brood frame from the colony. And so what you're going to see uh, right now is I'm going to come up, kind of show the camera what's on that frame. I ended up taking this frame. And so part of the process for tagging bees is that I want newly emerged bees. So none of these bees that are actually out and on the comb that are adults uh, are really important to me. What I want is the frame that has the developing bees. And so what I'm going to do is um, come show you what it looks like. And then I think the next part of the process is actually my favorite. So this is actually uh, whenever I first teach my undergrads to beekeep, the first lesson I tell them is uh, bees are surprisingly amenable to just being shaken and thrown around. Uh, and so that's what I need to do because I just want the frame and not the actual bees. And so then what I did is I took that frame back to the truck, put it in the box, and then brought back one of the frames that I uh, had in the box to swap it with. And so right now what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of extra smoke in the colony. And what I could do is just replace that frame, close the colony up. But I kind of figured that there'd probably be some good emerging workers as well. So what I'm doing right now is working through the colony, seeing if I can find some good emerging female workers as well. Apparently that's also when I realized that I should move over to the other side of the colony for a better camera angle. And so my suspicion turned out to be true and I found a real banger of a frame. And so this is me coming up to the camera to show you what it looks like. And I'll show you a picture later on of what it looks like without bees all over it. And you'll kind of get a better picture of what I'm seeing that makes me say like, oh yeah, let's definitely take this frame with us. And so that's what I'm doing here. And just like the previous frame, you got to give it the old shake a shake up before you take it with you. 
So I got two pretty good frames from that first colony, but I was looking for one more frame of drone brood. Unfortunately, no other colony that I had in that apiary was going to have that. So here's me working in another apiary, and this is a big part of looking for emerging brood, is sometimes it can be a bit of a, a wild goose chase or whatever the idiom is. What you're going to see here is me looking at a drone brood frame, deciding that it's not the best, but then realizing that it's worth looking at because I realized that the queen's on this frame, and I figured you guys might want to see that. And so I realized that you guys probably didn't get a good look at her from the video, so I went and just took a couple pictures of her. I think that shows a lot more clearly just how much different the queen looks uh, compared to the female workers that are sterile. I'll talk a little bit more about honeybee morphology later on in the video, but it's a pretty stark difference, and you can kind of tell. You get a good eye for it, but this is the queen in this colony, and she is a beaut. She's a good-looking queen. You can see that she's clearly larger. She has the larger extended abdomen for laying eggs, and she's got the little uh, paint mark on her, which we do just to make it easier for us to spot her whenever we're working through a colony. And so this is what the frame of female workers that we took from that first colony looks like. And this is kind of what you're looking for. It's a little bit more irregular, but normally what you want is kind of an empty center and then a ring around the edge of bees that are just now coming out. And essentially what that means is that all of the bees in the middle have already come out, and then the kind of last bees that were laid that are just about to come out um, are the only thing left on the frame. Ultimately, the best sign you can get is bees actually emerging from the frame. And so that's what I'm showing here is a little bee, fully developed, chewing her way out of her cell. You can see her get almost halfway out, and then she kind of decides that she'll do the rest of the work later. I feel you, little lady. And so that wraps up day one of bee tagging. Like I said, there's a lot involved in the process. So once you have the bees in the incubator, they'll continue to emerge, and you can just come back the next day and tag the newly emerged bees. So that's actually what I just got done doing, and I filmed that with my friend Amelia. But I think we're going to do that as a part two, day two video on its own, since this is getting a little bit long. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit that bell, as the kids do. And uh, thanks for spending some time with me and the bees. I'll see you next time.